Welcome to everybody to our Monday night lecture that's been added recently because uh, we're very lucky to be able to host Mayan Song tonight at SciArc. Mayan Song is a founding partner of the Beijing and Santa Monica based architectural firm MAD. He is the first Chinese architect to win an international competition for an overseas landmark building with his twin absolute towers near Toronto, completed in 2012. Since then, Ma has built skyscrapers, opera houses, museums, housing complex, and entire neighborhoods in China. Now, the 48 years old Yale trained architect who once worked for Zaya did has gained the status of Archistar. And he is a designer behind George Lucas Museum. And many Angelinos are waiting to visit this curved shimmering structure featuring George Lucas' collection of illustration, photography, memorabilia of films and movies, all dedicated to the craft of storytelling. And I'm sure many of you here want to see what the museum looks like. And exactly like movies, mass creations can be seen as digital fictions landing in real life, in a city that has produced more stories to experience on screen than most. Mass buildings are instances of a digital formalist era that has indeed, against all criticism and all odds, become real and a public asset that everyone comes to visit. Mass Museum is another instance of how Hollywood imagines Los Angeles, this time through the eyes of an architect. MAD work, like much of the formalism, formalism burned out of the first digital turn, is described in academic context as a protest against the strict rules of Western modernist architecture, with its emphasis on repetition and obsession with pure practical orthogonal buildings. In professional and political context, these designs fit the philosophy of a Shu city, a long evolving Chinese concept combining urban construction and nature environment, keeping both men in and out of nature. Critics often have an easy job. They ask for more rigor, more investigation, more consciousness, and of course, there is a reason and an answer to each critique. But today, Ma is lecturing at SciArc, among individuals who understand the desire to shape a new kind of space. And for tonight only, we can leave the storytelling behind. We will resume it for tomorrow's client meetings. Ma's design are born in the great Cartesian space of modeling softwares. This digital architecture is slick and shiny. This digital formalism looks for geometrical novelty, looks for voluptuousness, looks for singularity. Its render manifestations are under detail, but not because its architecture is against tectonic, but because details are expression of a reality of labor that still needs to process this way of buildings. We all understand the personal attachment to sculpt in digital space, and Ma is one of the few designers for whom those forms of imagination have become real. The design of MAD, MAD came a long way from the spline dreams of two Yale graduates entering competitions, the collective desire for a new urban iconography, and the tenacity of his team has allowed MAD to build complex geometrical shape buildings in cities all around the world. These rendered visions have become public landmarks that everyone comes to visit. You don't often get to do that as an architect. Ma is the director behind the scenes, generally quiet. If you know him personally, you know that he's a man of few words, aware of the limits and potentials of his own designs, and has decided to let his buildings do their talking while his lieutenants do the job of building them. There is a lack of fear in Ma, a key trait for pulling off the near impossible like landing a UFO in Los Angeles. But after all, isn't Los Angeles the land of Hollywood imagination? Please join me in welcoming Ma on the stage.
Thank you, uh, Elena, uh, for your invitation. It's uh, my honor to be here again after many years. Uh, I feel very comfortable in school uh, after practicing. Uh, <clears throat> and today I'm going to uh, show you some uh, recent uh, projects by our studio, Matt. Um, <coughs> I, <clears throat> Elena mentioned um, um, the, we put some dreams into reality. I think that remind me my original dream uh, as a young kid. I wanted to be a filmmaker when I was uh, in, in middle school. And then later I end up uh, become an architect. So maybe at the very beginning, I, I see architecture as a way to, uh, to express uh, your, your, your understanding about the world, uh, not necessarily uh, to build. But uh, later on, I find that's really um, attractive uh, to you. Actually, you can draw, also you can, you can build. <laughs> and then I've, that's the reason every time we want to push the idea into reality. So today I'm going to show the, the, the work. Most of them, uh, they were built, uh, except this one. Uh, the, f the first one was just one image we lost in that one competition, was a renovation concept for a tower called uh, Montana's Tower in Paris. Uh, our proposal was uh, uh, um, more like uh, um, optical uh, illusion, uh, a treatment for the facade of the tower because it's a renovation. We cannot take down the original structure, but we change um, the, the facade. So everything reflected in this building are, are reversed upside down. So you see the Eiffel Tower upside down in, from one angle. So this was uh, almost like um, an art piece uh, somehow uh, to make the architecture blend into um, the surrounding in a very special way. Um, the, the argument was um, why we criticize this uh, high-rise building and we respect the original high-rise building, which is Eiffel Tower. That's the origin of the high-rise. So, so I think to build up this uh, dialogue in between two was interesting, but of course we, we lost this uh, competition. And then the second one is a small project. It's, a, it's also an art project. We, we were involved in Japan. Uh, you see this uh, green valley and the beautiful river, and we, we, we also renovate uh, um, a, a tunnel uh, in this valley. Uh, so that's the turn off for visitors to, to go in, um, to walk inside the mountain for uh, 700 meter, and then in the end, they can uh, look, uh, look out uh, for the sightseeing to, to, the, to the river. And that was originally uh, a concrete structure, and we renovate to make everything inside reflective by putting the, the metal panels on the, on the ceiling, and we also pull the water from the river into the floor of the, of the tunnel. So um, the space inside become rather um, um, interactive uh, space for, for visitors. People can walk in the water, and when they reach the edge of the uh, of the, of the cave, when they look outside, uh, the other people can, can look at them, they can observe them. Uh, so they, they look like uh, floating in between the, the, uh, the sky and, uh, and water. Um, so that's, that's a, a, um, a, another project about the lighting. We use lighting and the material and the space to form certain atmosphere. This is, a, for me, very important. Um, 
uh, doesn't matter large project or small project, we, we think we can use atm atmosphere to interact with, uh, with uh, uh, people uh, from the, uh, with emotional quality. Um, <clears throat> and this is a, a small library we built in Hainan, uh, a southern island uh, in China. Uh, this building we also with a lot of holes. I think we, sh we, we showed this uh, model to, to you, Elena, a uh, long time ago, maybe ten, more than 10 years ago. We did this uh, original model, but in the end, we find the opportunity to build it. It's a second, it's a two floor building, all cast uh, in uh, concrete, um, with a library inside, also a public toilet. Um, so it's um, a very open public space. Um, people can go through the building, people can climb up to the roof, and they can also, of course, enter the building to use it as a library. We call this a uh, building a uh, cloudscape. So it, it basically like very organic uh, cloud with a lot of holes in it. So people can go inside and explore the space um, there's a cafe and there's a roof and with a lot of holes, again, to bring in the natural light. Everything is, uh, is, uh, is in concrete. Uh, there's a no column, so the floor, wall, and the, uh, everything is uh, undulating and connected. And this is a reading space in, in the middle with also the natural light from the above, and people can sit on the steps, and when they read, they can, uh, at the same time, uh, look out for the ocean. Um, so this is for sure, is a function is for reading. Uh, when I first visit the site, I see the beautiful ocean and the sky. Um, but why you have to read in this beautiful scenery? I think, Maybe the architecture can create such atm atmosphere so that uh, when people dive into a book, um, you know, the, the environment can, can, be, can be more um, uh, surrounded, you know, can, can bring people into such uh, content more, more, more deeper. Um, so they discover the reality in a very different way because when they look at the, the, the ocean, the sky, it's, it's the same as Euro, it's beautiful, but it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a normal, it's like a, um, objective. But uh, reading, I think, is a more personal, it's a more about you create a personal angle for everyone to be able to see this um, surrounding from, from their own angles. And there's uh, also the staircase, a lot of light coming in from the above, some other reading space. Um, this is a special library for kids. So this is a more uh, in different scale, the smaller scale also, uh, the height is very low. Um, um, so the adult is uh, it's not, not easy to go in. And there's a, a detail of a concrete work. And this, you see a lot of bubbles. That's, that was an accident, but uh, we find that's very beautiful to, to have this uh, mistake. Uh, the bubbles, uh, the holes, I think, can, can create a depth of the space for people to, um, to imagine. <clears throat> Uh, this is a rather bigger uh, project. You see a lot of uh, green mountains. There are buildings, actually. There's a, uh, a stadium. You see the stadium in the middle and the lake and the several uh, volcano mountains. There are also stadiums. Um, we were building this in Quizhou, uh, Zhejiang province. Uh, it's a not big city. Um, so for, the, uh, for this city, there's a, quite a large development. Uh, in this 
case, the architecture disappeared. Uh, you don't see the, sh um, the, the, the facade, uh, the structure, everything is, is uh, embedded into the landscape. And people can, can wander around, they can climb the, the green hill, they can go to uh, the top of, of each volcano. So the whole thing become a park, uh, a land art for everyone to be able to wander around. And uh, <clears throat> so, so, so inside the mountain, you see the, the structure. You see the large span, uh, the seating, the, the other functional rooms. And uh, so that's, for example, that's one of the space is a standard uh, basketball court uh, inside. Uh, there's another one, another mountain inside there. Uh, you have a three bubbles as a structure to, to uh, work together uh, as a swimming pool. So, so inside this, you have a natural light, na natural ventilation. So it's, although it's, embedded, uh, it's, uh, it's buried in the, in, the, in the green, but it's not, it's, it's not like uh, underground. It's, it's uh, have, have everything, the air, the, the light, um, except the, the, the facade that disappeared. Um, and, and people can access all this uh, exterior from outside. They can climb it. And there's all the construction site. Um, <clears throat> so these three are, are still under construction, but we finish one uh, stadium already. So that's the, the roof of the stadium. That's the only structure you uh, you see because the roof has to cover the, all the seating uh, for the stadium, uh, the 30,000 seats. And, but, the, but the surrounding are all buried uh, into the, the grass. So in this case, people can actually access the stadium from all the direction. <laughs> There's a very hard to manage the, to the secure the gate, but but that's our goal. We want the, the whole uh, site to be open, to be uh, accessible for everyone daily. Uh, so uh, the whole uh, surrounding, you see this all connected to the lake uh, and, uh, and become open park. Uh, so people can use the space daily, not just for the uh, matches, but also the, you know, every weekend, every day, people can come to run, they, they bring the family and the, their dogs, and uh, you know, they, they can use it. So the whole area is not just for competitions. Uh, so the architecture doesn't show the monumental um, strengths of the structure, but rather um, a blend into the nature. And here you see the roof. We try to create a very light uh, weight uh, roof with a very large span. So it looked like a floating cloud above the seating. And we also uh, buried the, the parking structure under. So this parking structure is actually like five, six floor above ground covered by the green. And from here, you can park and you can use a pedestrian um, bridge directly go into the um, <clears throat> stadium. Inside all concrete. So all, we cast all these concrete columns and, and floors. Um, very, very simple, but, but very uh, strong. Um, so, so inside, you realize this is architecture space, architecture um, rhythm, uh, but outside is uh, totally uh, very soft, very different. <clears throat> this is the main entrance to the stadium. It's a very large span um, concrete structure. So we, we like people um, experienced outside as a nature, but when they go inside, they find uh, another dimension, another um, explore, um, another way to explore the, the inside, the, the spaces. And here the, the view from the, 
the outside the city. So when the surrounding they're getting they're getting developed and building a lot of towers, it's important that we have we, we don't have a several big buildings but a, a park a, a green. So that's our goal. So nature become very important. I think uh, in this case. It's always good to bring green, to bring open space. But in this case, I think we also want to make a green as a art, um, uh, as, as, a, as a, almost like a land art uh, environment. So <clears throat> people, not, people can go there not just to use it, but also can experience some uniqueness or, or surreal atmosphere. <clears throat> I often start each project from sketch. This is a, look like a two mountains. And then here's a, the model of it. There's another project in Beijing. It's a two office tower uh, followed by several uh, smaller commercial um, buildings. Here are the, the photo in, in the city. You see the bigger green. That's uh, the Chaoyang Park. It's the largest park in, in Beijing. And our project is right on the edge of the park. And there are not many residential buildings here, but when they build it, they will build a wall. They will build a, a, a wall to maximum the view towards the park. Uh, so the, the building somehow become a boundary in between the city and the nature. But in our case, we want to build our building uh, more like organic mountains. So it looks like uh, uh, it's uh, in the park. So we want to plant, we want to blur this uh, transition from the city to the nature. <clears throat> and uh, this, is a, uh, this, this is a painting by a critic from China. He, he, um, he uh, created this uh, duplication of, uh, of uh, classic paintings and put uh, modern buildings in, in them. So this painting, you see the mountain, the water, and the, the landscape. That's a, that's a traditional Chinese painting. And he put our building on the far right. That's a, the black mountain. It looks very fit. Uh, but it's actually, in, in real, uh, it's a... Uh, um, it's a very different from all other modern buildings because uh, our building is more like uh, traditional landscaping, you know, mountains and, and there's a curves. But our CBD uh, modern towers are more like uh, a very hard geometry, very uh, powerful uh, image, which is um, we, we, we want to, 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 to be uh, uh, different. <clears throat> and that's a view from the park. Uh, we have this two tower, um, black. Um, some people think that's too black. Um, but I, I like it because, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's uh, different from the surrounding. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, it's uh, more belongs to the lake and, uh, and the park in front of it. But when, once you go into the project, you find this uh, a green valley inside it. It's, a, it's open public space uh, in between the smaller buildings. So, so here you can feel very comfortable to, to, to stay. But from outside, you see the black uh, complex in glass. It's uh, look a little alien in, in the place, but my argument was why this looks so fit in that painting, um, but not in reality. In, in reality, you see other, because they build all these residential um, blocks around us, and uh, when we start construction, they see the, the, the dark color glass, uh, 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 and start to, to appear in the city. The find is so different, and they asked me to adjust the color. I said, it's too late. It's, uh, um, but maybe something wrong with the surrounding. You know, you know this, those towers, they can be anywhere, 
um, but when they put here, it's not um, not so respect to the park or the city like Beijing. But that was my argument. Um, <clears throat> but in um, that's the space inside it. Um, we also borrowed some um, landscape from the old paintings. We try to create this uh, dialogue. Uh, although they are using all different material, different technology, um, but we still try to achieve some Chineseness in this project. That's um, um, my intent at, at that time. So that's that's when you look out from the tower, you see the, the bamboo and everything. Those are very symbolic. Uh, Chinese thing, but not architecture. And at, around that period, we also build another project like this. This is a, another uh, mixed-use towers in Nanjing near the train station. It's a, I think it's a, around 12 towers altogether. So we build everything in one language. They look like a backdrop of the village in, in the middle. So everything around this uh, photo either look like um, mountains or waterfalls. And we want people to focus on the village, a smaller human scale in the middle. So when they go in there, they, 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 they can more experience the, uh, the human space. So there, there's a period we build a lot of mountains like, like that. and. Uh, uh, here's another one. This is not in the city center, but uh, in the beautiful wildland uh, uh, wild area. It's a park. We built a, uh, the opera house in Harbin. It's a northern China, very cold place. Um, uh, but you can see we built a very undulating, a curved uh, building, uh, blend into the horizon. Um, so the, the building has this a position to be a part of the landscape or become the extension of the uh, park experience. People can approach the building and they can climb the building from outside by you know, walk, uh, walking on the ramp on the facade. So from, from this cut, people can, you know, can, can walk along the building and they reach the rooftop when the, the building closed. Because the opera house, they, most time they close um, during the day or weekdays. And on the roof, there's the amphitheater. And people, there's an open to everyone. They can come here, look at the uh, surrounding. They can observe the sky. They can do uh, the performance. They can use the space. That's the position of the building. They doesn't try to be very tall, very strong, but trying to be uh, humble and, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, you know, blend, blending into the, the environment. Because the horizon for me is, a, is super powerful in this, um, um, in this, in this context. Uh, inside, um, we, we want to build a very transparent, open, and, and a warm, uh, public space with uh, with this uh, wood object in the middle. This is a rather classic layout. We put the theater uh, the the theater hall in the middle, and it's a quite a you know symmetrical order. So um, I think there's a classic um, feeling in the project. Oh, uh, same as the inside. We also bring the natural light into the into the interior of the. Uh, auditorium, and everything inside is a curve as well. This is uh, also very good for uh, acoustic. Um, uh, here's a new project we just finished. Uh, it's a train station uh, in also Zhejiang province, a uh, city called Jiaxing. It's also small, it's quite a small city. Um, we built this train station uh, mainly underground, so we can keep the uh, the ground level as a green park. 
to leave more space to uh, the city and to public. Mm -hmm. The goal is to make this uh, whole area not single purpose, not just for the train, not just for the travelers, but for everyone. They can come here shopping, you know, having the leisure time. So we want to make a park. Uh, so we call this uh, project a train station inside the forest. That's a, that's a slogan. I mean, maybe underground train station you can, you can find in Europe, in, in Japan, but not in China. China is uh, every city built a lar very large train station, huge structure uh, above ground because they become more like uh, um, that the image of the train station um, shows the, um, you know, the, 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 the rank of the city, more or less. So show the, show the power. But, but here we, we put everything uh, below ground, which is quite uh, uh, difficult. Uh, but uh, above ground, we, we, we do need some, some functions. We have shopping, we have a hotel, an office, um, but they all kind of integrate uh, to the landscape. The reason we can put uh, the, the, the station underground because we say we want to respect this building. This is a very simple two-floor um, European-style building. Um, that's, that, that, that was an important building because uh, that's uh, 100 years ago, the first uh, train station building in the city. So we, we said we want to respect that. So uh, the new structure has to be very low. Um, uh, everyone agreed. That's, that's how we convince people. But at the beginning, they say, you, you can you can say you respect the, that building, but the station have to be big. Maybe you can enlarge that uh, old building, to, so 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 the, the old building still look bigger. That means the old this two floor building has to be maybe sixty meter tall. But uh, we said no. We need to keep the old the origin uh, real. So above ground, we only have a single floor. Um, uh, but, the, but, the, but the station actually is, it's, a, it's one floor below. In that, in that way, we can make everything connect very easy. The underground parking, underground um, public transportation, uh, subway, everything are, are flat. But above ground become um, urban space. So you have enough uh, natural light go in. So in this case, we have an old platform, new platform, old building, new building, everything kind of uh, um, all these uh, layers representing different time. We put them all together, more like a, a movie, I think, to, 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 to show that uh, in all different history, um, they're all equal important. That's, that, that's quite a, for me, it's quite an important argument in China because in most time, um, when we want to respect certain history, we build everything to, we fake, we fake everything to, to look old. Um, <clears throat> this is another case, also uh, build a new building around old. It's, uh, it's a kindergarten in Beijing. We call this uh, courtyard kindergarten because there is a old courtyard house in the middle. Uh, it's a 300 year history uh, courtyard. And we build a roof, a single floor building around it like this. Um, well, actually when I visit the site, there are several fake old buildings uh, on the side. But I said, we can do the new building, but you have to demolish this. Uh, especially for kindergarten, for kids, they have to know which is real, which is fake. Uh, so they agree. So, and then we build this a new building, occupy the whole site, but a single floor. And we also uh, carve out the, the courtyard space for trees, for, for outdoor activity. And then uh, people can use the roof to, uh, as a playground. So that's when the building completed. You see the old and new, they are uh, all together. They, they, they work together as a one kindergarten. They have classrooms in both parts. 
Um, and we keep the new building a single floor because when you when you uh, when you're in the in the traditional courtyard, you don't see the new building actually uh, because they're same height. Uh, I think they the building looked different. The language, uh, um, the color, everything you know, the material. But I, I think the layout, the spatial organization, they're similar because they're all about internal, um, like the uh, negative space, which is courtyard. In our case, there are several existing trees on the side. So we just use those trees to, 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 uh, to cut the courtyard. So um, there is a uh, natural light, natural uh, ventilation for the, for the classrooms. And here from uh, one angle, you see the new building through the old gate and some relationship in between the, the new corridor and the old wall. So, <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a, the time space we often like to create if, if we have a, the, old, the old memory. So we, we think maybe, you know, to, to observe the old from new angle could be uh, more interesting. Um, here's another kindergarten, a small project in Japan, but that's quite interesting it, because it also has an old structure in it. You see from this model, the wood frame structure was original house um, um, uh, of the owner uh, of, the, of the kindergarten. They lived there for generations and they wanted to, to at the beginning they wanted to demolish the house and build a kindergarten. Uh, but then the later the, 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 the father uh, got sick and uh, it was uh, hard for them to demolish the, the, the memories. Uh, so we suggest maybe you can keep part of the house and uh, use it as a part of the new um, uh, kindergarten building. And they like the idea. So that's the original house and we keep the structure, we use it um, as a part of the bigger structure. And that, that's the old, and <clears throat> when, the, when they start construction, they have a ceremony like this. I, I don't see this in China. I think we have a different ceremony, but this is a, looks so moving. I mean, they, for the small project, they pray to the, to the earth. So that's really, uh, let me think, the, how architecture rooted into earth to, to a place especially when their project has such memory and the, and the emotional connection to people. Um, maybe that's, that's something really important. That's uh, uh, the young kids are also uh, going to go to this kindergarten. And that's a building when we completed, it. it looked so uh, different from the surroundings. So some people might think that's a, uh, uh, from other plays or, or, or not contextual, but maybe from my story, you can, you can, you understand that's actually really contextual. It's uh, really rooted into the old building and the memories of the place. So here the three floor building, um, uh, but inside you, you see this uh, wood frame um, as a, part of the classrooms. And this not, not some you know, important or listed historical building, but it has a memory. So that's why I think it has value. Uh, so people, uh, like kids go to school here, when they grow up, they know the story, they know where, they, uh, where, where this building come from. I think that's really important. And here the, the classroom, the library on the roof, uh, on the original roof of the building, and they, we have a new roof, so there's a space in between. Um, so from, I think from this project, I find architecture can be really um, uh, rooted into different places and uh, linked to people's uh, life, because only in, in 
Um, in this case, you know the client very well. You know what they're hoping, what they're um, dreaming, what, what's their difficulty, and you somehow become more involved into this. I think I find that's really important. And then I want to show this project in Los Angeles. That's uh, that's building we already built. In, it's, it's a condo, it's an apartment building uh, in Beverly Hills on the Wilshire Boulevard. Um, it's called a garden house. Uh, we built a, a courtyard typology, um, but it's a five floor. Uh, surrounding you see the single family houses, but because our site is next to the Wilshire, so we have to build a taller. Um, so we build uh, like like this. We have a, of course, we have a, a exterior, but more important, we build a interior, which is more com communal space in the middle. And from outside, <clears throat> that was my first impression when I visit uh, Beverly Hill. I see a lot of uh, green wall and a beautiful house uh, hidden behind it. So I thought, I thought maybe we should build a green hill first and then build a house on top of it. It's more like a comic, very direct. But uh, I find it very lovely. Um, we, we make the five floor building look like a, a more human scale, more smaller scale. <clears throat> So at the ground level uh, is a commercial, uh, and uh, the two levels above are already uh, apartment, uh, but we cover the whole facade uh, by green, so it's more like landscape. On top of it, we have uh, like two floor um, villas with, uh, with the gardens and trees. So it's like a small village on top of a uh, green hill. <clears throat> and we want to create more intimate and, and quiet space in the courtyard. So that's a, that's a pathway you can go into the, the central courtyard. There's a water feature here and the natural light coming down to the ground level. And the second level, there's uh, gardens. So that's a space for, for all the neighbors to share. And they have all the outdoor um, <clears throat> outdoor terrace and, and uh, facing the inside. But they also have a living room facing each other. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we also complete recently a residential tower in, in Paris. Um, uh, this is a building on the, on the right. You see we make a lot of uh, terraces so it's outdoor, uh, outdoor life. So that's, uh, uh, is, you see uh, a strange building in front of our, our building. But there are many strange buildings in this area. That was a result of a workshop. They're like invited by the city, um, many different architects, each one designed one building. So in our case, we, we designed this uh, residential tower, commercial tower, um, together with another tower, the two tower on one side, um, like this. Um, so that's our tower, this is another one. We share one uh, podium, uh, one, one is a commercial, one is a, a social. So each plot, they have a two bu buildings like this, uh, using by different users to, um, to, to, to have the more mixed um, uh, population in the, in the area. So in our case, we want to make a very curvy and, and uh, a lot of uh, outdoor terraces, um, very simple. But, but here we want to make every, every floor different. Um, we, we basically start from hand, hand sketch again, so um, nothing from computer or a program. We just uh, trace the, the hand drawing and um, make it make it a construction document. 
So from here, you see all these lines are very, very different. Uh, I think, I think this way I find architecture more emotional. I don't find that the best answer, best solution. I think there, there's a no best solution. I think we all we we want to find architecture to be human, not necessarily handcraft material or detail. It's a, but 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 um, um, the design wise, I'm more like I want to find some. Um, um, accent, uh, accident, or or, or um, emotional uh, instant response, you know, in 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 the in the lines or or, or spaces or whatever. And we also collaborate with one artist to, because because there is a subway <clears throat> entrance at, at the podium. Um, <clears throat> and here we, we, we're building a, a residential uh, apartment building in Denver, which I feel very exciting. Uh, it's under construction, near completion. It's called a One River North in Denver. Uh, you, you see this building look like a, 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 green, a green canyon goes through the whole facade of the building, but this green, uh, space it's actually not just on the facade but go into the structure and the, and the space layout so here the the context and so this green valley there can be accessible for all the residents uh, there are actually amenities and the public gardens inside the inside this uh, building like this. So you can access this from all different levels and from this exterior space. So you can, once you're here, you can walk outside. You can climb this really like uh, uh, experience in the nature, like climb the mountain. Like you see the, we have a water features also here. So it's a very much about bring natural experience into the metropolitan. So the, the building, obviously, the wall is, is, a typical, is a typical typology in the cities. You have a glass facade, everything modern, simple. But here we, 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 we curved out uh, this uh, very organic and, and green space for, uh, for human. And here is a, you show the depths of the space and the water feature and the shaded outdoor area. And uh, some floor you have uh, indoor uh, um, amenities, so you can use both outdoor and indoor. Um, so that's how I think we use a negative space uh, inside the typical block to to bring nature. It's not necessary from the the the, the big uh, um, the the skyline of the building, but but from human scale. So this is something people can really feel um, when they are living in the building. They can use the space and they can um, also look at the surrounding city and, and the mountains uh, from this, uh, from this uh, space. Uh, this is uh, another project also start scratch from uh, one sketch. Here you see a very long building uh, with a, a tornado in the middle. Look like a like a tornado and a bird. That's that's a, a sculpture actually. That's a, that was a um, a proposal for um, an immigration museum in uh, Rotterdam, uh, Netherlands. So that's a, our proposal to make this uh, double spiral uh, staircase. So they. Um, there, there's a two staircase. They they they, they grow together so that the structure can be stable and people can use either one to go up and come down. So they can um, they don't repeat, right? So they uh, and then we insert it into a very long existing warehouse. I think like this building, very long. But in the middle, we make it super transparent as a lobby. Uh, the building was a warehouse, but they, they, they want to 
transform in, into an immigration museum because this is the port where all the European ships depart for New York like a long time ago. So they, um, so the staircase is to bring people from the lobby to the second floor gallery to the roof and then become the city, um, you know, the, the platform. And then we have the bird, but the bird is not there anymore. Um, they don't, uh, this, the, the structurally very dif more difficult than, than the, uh, I don't know why. Um, uh, I said, I, I said, uh, I said, when I visited the site, that the, the seagulls gave me really um, big impression. Like uh, <clears throat> they all look same, but they they don't feel they're 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 from different region. They can you see them everywhere along the ocean. Maybe that's a good. Uh, good observation for immigration uh, museum. But when I did a public hearing, one old lady asked me, how do you know they're same? Maybe they, they find each other different. I don't know how to respond. But a, the whole argument around the hearing is about a, a seagull. Everyone has a no, no comment about, about a tornado. So we want this thing to be really floating with a minimum um, structure. Um, so that's uh, old and new. That's a model of it. And then now we are we're doing the mock-up. We, I think we, the structure already finished, and then they're, they're building, the, building this cli uh, cladding, the, the, the steel uh, cladding outside. Um, the, <clears throat> this is uh, the museum in Los Angeles that's started, I think, how many years ago? Four years ago, I think. We, we started earlier uh, in Chicago for the Lucas Museum um, with a different design. Uh, but uh, later on, we moved to the Los Angeles, and it, this is the exposition park. <clears throat> And this is a new site. It's a different from <clears throat> before, and different city, different culture. So we decided to make a new design. <clears throat> this one is more like a floating building. So the, on, on the ground, we, we build a podium, uh, but the podium is more uh, like um, embedded into the landscape. So the whole linear site, very long site, become <clears throat> accessible green park on the, on the lower level. And then we have a galleries all lifted uh, in the sky. And then on the roof, we, we build another uh, roof um, uh, floor for public. People can access the, the, uh, the roof uh, as well. I visit the site. From there, you can see the downtown view very beautifully um, surrounding, you can see. And so, <clears throat> So this is a very organic building, like a, more like a cloud moving around, and not it's a uncertain geometry. Um, but there is a there is a like arch uh, on the lower level because that's uh, the the existing entrance to the exposition park to the west. So the building is above that uh, axis. So almost this space is almost become gateway. So here we, we built um, this arch. Above the, uh, below the arch, you have a museum side. The, the smaller part is the education part. So you have two entrances uh, for different visitors to go to different part of the building. But above it, uh, they all connected as a gallery floor. So there are some construction uh, photos from maybe years ago. And here's a, the gateway, the entrance um, to, the, um, to, the, uh, to the museum lobby. And there is a big hole above, above this space. This is actually a street um, space. And in the future, will become a um, pedestrian square. Everyone can be here shaded. They can pass by. They can go into the other museums through here but they can also uh, enter the museum on the side. So there's a glass lobby 
uh, chip of floor. Um, you can go in there. And once you go into the lobby, there's uh, two theaters and uh, uh, restaurants and gift shops on the ground level. And if you go to exhibition, take a lift. So I, all, the, all the exhibitions are above. So there is an experience, you go in, and you know that the building is lifted. It's more like a spaceship. And then you can, you can, you can lift yourself and go up to the exhibition from the elevator. That's a more like a um, experience. <clears throat> we also um, use waterfalls. You know, this is a, this is a, actually it's a cooling device for, for mechanical. There's a cooling towers behind the, the water. So this, the water features and the green space on the ground level to, to make uh, the ground experience also uh, nice for the, for the as a, as a park. This is some inside photo. Um, some panels slowly they getting up to the building. Um, last project is there's a no real photo because I'm we're still um, designing it, um, and uh, and uh, it, it's a start construction in Shenzhen, um, uh, a big city in. In China, uh, you see this uh, model. Uh, many organic stones. It's actually like this. Uh, we, we build a, a landscaping a podium, horizontal uh, underground horizontal podium, and then several like um, random stone, like uh, almost like a, a sculpture. But inside there, there are special galleries. It's, a, it's a, a quite large museum in Shenzhen. It's like this, it's a, uh, full of towers. There's a, all the, all the um, big structure. But, so, so I think it's quite a dense area, but it's in front of the ocean. In, here below the image is actually um, the ocean front and the beautiful park. On the other side is Hong Kong. So here is, I think it's the, 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 the only last open space in this area. So we decide to not, be, not build a big building, but uh, a more open park. So the, so, so, so we build a, a, the, the main, um, main program on the, on the basement, also the ground level, but we occupy the whole side, so, so it's a flat. And then we covered the roof by, by landscape, green and the lake. Uh, so it's, a, it's a more like an open park experience. And then we put uh, some galleries above the ground. So that's the, um, the stone you, you see. And here the view when you look at the project from the city towards uh, the ocean. So the other side is uh, Hong Kong, the mountains, the ocean. So I, I like this view because the other view, you, you find the contrast. Uh, you find the modern image, modern city, glass towers, and this strange uh, stone in front of it. But here you find, I don't know, somehow for me, it's, it's more suitable. It's more uh, talking to the, to the infinity which is, for, for me, it is, a, is ancient time. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's ancient time. It's, a, it's a maybe a thousand years, I don't know, million years. But we want the, this architecture to be not so much representing a time, but uh, more like, uh, I don't know, more abstract. So, so when they, when, when you put it into this, uh, uh, nature uh, backdrop, um, it creates a, a new time uh, atmosphere for the city, uh, especially for Shenzhen. You know, Shenzhen is uh, only 30 years old, uh, 30 years old, the city. It's a new city, but it's, a, it's a 10 million people already. So it's a big city, very young, very modern. Um, so I, I don't think we should build uh, something fake history, but um, something I think with more more depth would be more interesting. 
So that's a, um, you see this uh, from other angles, and uh, this is how people can occupy the outdoor space, the park, uh, around the stone. They're, they're actually, some of them are on the ground level, some of them on the, on the roof. So you have this undulating roof uh, where people can use as a park. It's quite large. It's from different angles. And the, the stone has a, all different position because the interior, they have a, some horizontal exhibition space, some, some vertical. So uh, they have a different shapes and people can sometimes use, uh, use the roof of the stone. They can, they can climb and uh, that's some interior space. That's all concrete uh, structural shell, um, natural light. Uh, courtyard, and, and there's a, some small stone uh, floating above. So in, in the end, I, I would refer to my, the first image. I think, I think in the public buildings, the quality is, of course, open to everyone. Uh, providing uh, green space is, is, I think, always good. But if we can try to bring some emotional quality to everyone, uh, to normal people um, in the big cities. Everyone is a struggle uh, about the daily lives. So maybe the cultural building is something can help people to escape from um, the daily um, reality and find the surrealness or, or the the, the enter point to an, another dimension of the space will be, will be um, much, much uh, important. Um, thank you very much. That's my presentation. <laughs> <laughs>